Samsung just dropped an update that makes your Galaxy feel more like a Xiaomi, Oppo, Honor, or even iPhone. And it might be one of the most confusing updates that I've seen in an awfully long time. So let's talk about that. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and I know that Samsung is known for making truly class-leading hardware, ever since the likes of sort of the Galaxy S7 Edge, really. The S24 series and upcoming replacements look fantastic, and higher-end ultras usually cram in some of the best specs that we get over here in the West. However, for me, one of the key reasons that Samsung is excelling in this area is its software. Since the company was a pioneer in phablets and big phones in general, I've always found Samsung to do the big phone software thing the best. From the layout to the information density to the look and the feel, it's familiar feeling year on year, but different enough from the competition to sit on its own and almost create its own little ecosystem inside the Android one. I have been a big One UI fan for a very long time. Though I've daily driven Pixels, iPhones, OnePlus devices, as you all know, I've always loved what Samsung has been doing with One UI. And the firm just released One UI 7.0 based on Android 15, or at least the beta build for this, which you can install on your S24 Plus and Ultra, though it looks like availability will come to more widespread devices as time goes on. And I have to say, what Samsung usually does well with its updates, that familiarity and distinction from the competition, is, um, well, it's not here this update, at least in this beta. Like, there are changes to notification shades, quick settings, app draw, the dock. Sure, most of these changes are surface level and they are UI specific as opposed to the fundamental under the hood tweaks, but it's stuff that you interact with. So it is gonna make the biggest impression and it's definitely important. Like the Samsung Dynamic, I, I, okay, I mean now, but uh, yeah, I'm not actually too mad about this update. I really quite like it on the surface. It's a decent idea of having the quick access to certain things like timers and so on without having to dive into the app that they really come from. And obviously you have to do more touches to do certain actions. But right now, the now bar is limited to certain first party apps, and there doesn't seem to be the access to the APIs required for third parties to get involved. Again, at least in this beta, I figure that going down the line, Samsung will open this up to third parties, otherwise it doesn't really make much sense. But I am quite glad it's here, though it does feel quite Apple-esque. And actually, Honor and OnePlus have implemented similar features, although very much closer to the Dynamic Island style, on their OS. Too. If there was ever a time to use the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, then it would certainly be for the One UI 7 beta because there have been some absolutely wacky and questionable changes that make you kind of um, well, scratch your head and think, why the heck would they change any of this? Uh, for example, Samsung has poked about with the camera app and has changed the order of the shutter button, the mode lens selection, so it's now all sort of, well, different from every other phone, ironically. Before, it was kind of easy to switch between different OSs and get the same kind of experience. They also thinned down the settings in the top bar into this little sub-menu. I'm not sure if I really like this change. I'm not really sure what the thought process is either, especially given some of the other changes that they made that we will get into and that will start to make more sense. But I guess it's not a bad change, just one that means your muscle memory is going to be completely out of whack. I don't think it really solves any problems. Speaking of, Samsung's legendary staple horizontal page based app drawer has had a complete makeover. Like most other app drawers, it is now a vertical based scrolling one that you might find on a Pixel or a OnePlus or a, well, whatever really. Uh, we're also treated to a lovely secured by Knox watermark in the corner, which seems to make absolutely no sense. What, why was this a thing? Whose bright idea was it to put this logo here? Honestly, aside from the wacky choice of, um, well, logo in the corner, I don't mind this change. And actually you do have access to an option that you can revert it back to the page system if you want, which I really like because there are gonna be people who prefer that method and maybe bought a Samsung because they like that way of doing things. So I'm glad that's here. But overall, I'm not mad about the changes to the app drawer. Though it must be said, another change to One UI that makes it feel more like other OS's. So yeah, okay. 
just like the new default notifications quick settings shade. Thankfully the old way is still here and I really hope they keep a lot of these changes as options even if it's opt out like a lot of these are. These are the new default ways of doing things on One UI. A lot of us like One UI because it feels like the last one but with some new features. Anyway this new shade basically splits the notification drop down and the quick setting shade to two separate pages where they used to be combined before so you can actually swipe between them once you've gone down on one. There are a few little visual tweaks sprinkled in to enhance the UI experience. I am quite a fan of the new battery symbol and the charging animation actually. It looks more cohesive and streamlined. I know it's a very minor change and generally doesn't make a huge difference but it's one of the things I'm excited about. And of course this now does affect the now bar so when you charge your phone that will also come up in the sort of dock thing in the bottom when your screen is locked. Of course there are new app icons, widgets, stuff like that to play about with so if you're not a custom launcher kind of person but you still want that customization fix there are a few new options like removing app names, changing the size and then actually applying app names to widgets if you really want to and so on. And the new recents page having a new 3D like animation set up is a nice tweak I guess. It feels more dynamic and probably helps sell the 120 hertz screen on this thing which is really nice but I'm quite indifferent to it if I'm honest. It's a minor tweak. Let me know in the comments if you like this change. Yeah pretty standard. I'm not mad about it. I'm really torn in general what to think about the One UI 7 beta though. On the one hand I do like the little bits and pieces that the company took from other models but on the other I always felt like Samsung did it best and so there are changes on here that I really felt never needed being done which makes the whole update almost feel like change for change's sake. Like nice let's make the brand new Galaxy S25 Ultra feel more like a Xiaomi or an Oppo or an Honor with its software. You know the phones whose software is the main downside for most people and what keeps people from switching to the otherwise outstanding hardware coming out of China. It just doesn't really make much sense to me. I do really hope that Samsung keeps the option to go back to the old layout for a lot of these different changes, stuff like the app draw and the notification pull down, as these are two areas I really do feel like Samsung did the best and that will probably divide the community the most. But then saying that, these are also things that once you've changed and once you've used for a little bit, you kind of just get used to and it's no big deal. So I guess it's fine for most people. But Samsung making the One UI feel more like other phones is certainly a strange move given the software is one of the main things that differentiates Samsung's galaxies. But you know what? This is a beta and we might not see all of these changes come to the final build which should come out when Samsung releases the Galaxy S25 series slated for sort of January time. So we'll see what happens then. Guys this is going to be a divisive one for sure so please do let me know what you think of the One UI 7 beta in the comment section. Have you installed it on your Galaxy S24 Plus or Ultra? And do you own one of these? Let me know which one you have and if you're running the software because this is gonna be one of those changes I feel that you know, seems like a big deal on the surface but under the hood doesn't make a huge difference. So yeah, I'm intrigued to hear what you think. I'm a bit of a stickler for change so I, I just prefer the way that they used to do it. But again, we have the options so I'm not mad. While you're down there in the comments, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content and of course subscribe to never miss another upload. I'm Ryan Thomas and I will catch you later. Cheers.